G'day, and welcome to another great program. We're taking you all around South Australia for the best we have to offer in fishing, boating, and in fact, anything that involves the water. Coming up, salmon fishing near Wedge Island, diving off Kangaroo Island, cooking prawns the right way, and giving the little fellas another chance and test driving a couple of tricky boats. Okay, straight into it with Shane Mensforth, off Wedge Island in Southern Spencer Gulf. Last week we were catching Nanny Guy and Groper from the Failey, and now it's time for something completely different. It's been blowing pretty hard outside, so I've decided to head inshore for some calmer water. Well, we've decided to get off the Failey, put the small boat in the water. We're in quite close to Wedge Island and we've come across a patch of salmon. Now you can see the couple of guys behind me hooked up. It's mayhem on here at the moment. They're not huge fish, about two kilos, but they really know how to fight, as you can see by what's happening behind me here. Salmon will take a variety of lures, such as diving minnows, metal slices, and even rubber tails. But today they're jumping on just about anything we throw at them. Both overhead and thread line reels are fine for this sort of fishing. All you need is some six to eight kilo line, a shortish rod, and you're in with a really good chance. We're only in a couple of metres of water here, and that really makes the salmon go hard. Australian salmon aren't true salmon at all. They're not related in any way to those fantastic Atlantic salmon we pay top dollar for in the restaurants. Oh, nearly got him. But they're close relatives of the humble Tommy Ruff. <laughs> You'll find them in the surf, around ocean rocks, and at times lurking around offshore islands like Wedge. You've got a triple hook up here, this could end up in anything. You've got to do some fancy macrame, some fancy footwork here. Cooperation's obviously important when you've got this many guys fishing. Watch out for those flying lures. Releasing salmon's a good way to go these days. They're not a flash fish to eat by any means, so enjoy them on the line, then throw them back if you don't want them. We've let plenty of salmon go, and we've kept one or two. It's been a day these guys will never forget. Now this may look like a normal echo sounder transducer, but watch this. It comes off, and it goes back on again just as easily. This is part of the very clever Humminbird portable echo sounder system, which has been very popular in the Northern Territory with barramundi fishermen for years and is slowly finding its way down here into South Australia. Now the portable units run on twin 6 volt torch batteries, which means you can operate this unit in your boat without having to have a 12 volt system, and that's very handy. If you don't actually want to buy one of these compact units, you can go to the guys at Glasscraft and hire one for a day or a week or as long as you like, and that gives you the try before you buy option, which is a very good idea. These Hummerbird Compacts have a terrific LCD screen. In fact, they'll do just about everything that the more expensive units will do. Well done, Hummerbird. Another great idea. We're tying a loop into the end of a piece of rope. A lot of people will just tie a knot in the rope like that. And sure, you've got a loop there, and it's strong enough, but you'll never get it undone. It's what I call a shotgun knot. You need a shotgun to get it undone after it's had a bit of load on it. The proper thing to do is to tie a bowline. Go around whatever you're tying it onto, Put a loop in over the top of the rope like that. Go down through that loop over the top of this piece of rope here and then back up through there. Pull it tight and there it is. And that would be one of my favourite knots. It's uh, strong and easy to undo. Good one to work with. Sunday, good day, hey, mate. The Truman Show's Jim Carrey is Lloyd, and he's dumb. Yeah! Jeff Daniels is Harry, and he's dumber. From the makers of that movie about Mary, Dumb and Dumber, Sunday on 7. When you're looking for slate, you go straight to Stonecraft. But did you know Stonecraft also have a fantastic range of Marfloor genuine timber? 
hard-wearing deco-step laminates, quality Marstone sandstone and wall facing. Stonecraft, what a range, what a choice. And right now, you can save on oak laminate by deco-step, just $39 a metre. Stonecraft, one location only, for sales, installation and savings. I've got one! I've got one! I've got one! And you can get one with help from your locally operated Got One store. Enjoy the fishing experience, still one of the most popular pastimes in Australia. Soak up the great outdoors, take your family fishing today, and you don't need any experience to have a great time. And we have more than just fishing tackle, all quality brand products. So if you want to catch that big one, see your Got One store today. He's got one, he's got one, and he's got one. Got One fishing tackle with stores across Australia, there's got to be one near you. Oh, my cat ate the mouse. So where do you go for a new mouse? Dick Smith Electronics. Keyboards, joysticks, or anything else to do with computers? That's where you go. Dick Smith Electronics. That's where you go. If you're planning a wedding, book your formal wear this month at Ferrari's, and regardless of the wedding date, you can hire from just $49 per outfit. That's a saving of $41. But hurry, it's for bookings made this month only at Ferrari Formal Wear. Want to buy or sell a car? Now there's a better way and it's simple. See? Auto Supermarket Weekly. Look, full colour pictures of your car, 4x4, ute, motorcycle, light commercial, boat or caravan. We'll send our photographer to you and it's all included in the price. $60 for two weeks or advertise for as little as $20. Call Auto Supermarket Weekly on 1300 36 97 98. Auto Supermarket Weekly are pictures with a thousand words. Welcome back. It's boat test time, and this week, a little beauty from Quintrex. This is a five metre sea breeze from Quintrex. Now, it's made up in Queensland, but I reckon it'd be perfect for down here in South Oz as well. It's designed for family boating, for things like snorkeling and fishing. We've got about 10 knots of northerly wind here today, so we'll take it out on the Gulf. We'll really put this boat through its paces for you. One of the friendliest features of a boat like the Sea Breeze is that it's so easy to launch and to operate. This can be a one person boat with the right trailer. I really like the zip-up canopy from Harris Motor Trimmers. It lets the air in on a warm day and provides excellent all-round visibility. The Quintrex has got a deeply flared bow and very broad shines and these make for very positive handling. Conditions for our test run were pretty calm, but we did find a rather large tugboat wake to play with. This enabled it to test the boat's capabilities in lumpy water. As you can see, the sea breeze copes very well with a decent wave, landing quite softly and throwing that spray well away from the cockpit. The 70 horse Yamaha is pretty much a perfect power match for the sea breeze. Top speed over calm waters around 32 knots and that's plenty. I prefer driving from a standing position at times and the sea breeze seating allows this very comfortably. Stability at rest is very good for a lightweight boat and that's great news for the fishermen. And here's that tugboat wake again. At 25 knots I was able to cross it with absolute confidence. And retrieving, well it's just a piece of cake. The sea breeze comes with flush mounted rod holders, a half pod outboard mount with twin boarding platforms, an elevated battery shelf and a handy glove compartment. It's also got an enormous cockpit for a boat of this size. Well, the sea breeze is about as good as we thought it was going to be. Great little boat from Quintrex. Most people who go fishing will have a reason at some stage or another to release a fish back into the water. It may be because the fish is undersized. It may be because they practice this new idea of catch and release. Some people have even been known to kiss a fish before they do that. I'd like to uh, talk with Richard today about some of the ways that we can do that properly. Yeah, well, Andrew, uh, one of the most important things realistically is, is the time it takes. You don't want the fish out of the water for too long. So what we've got, we've got a brim on the line today. We'll take it out, we'll go through a few little steps and just try and show everybody the best way to uh, release the fish in the water. Okay. So we'll just bring this one in. What we've got here is, is, a, is a nice little Port River brim. First thing you notice, we've got a rag down here. Now this rag's actually a wet rag. Right. So what we're doing is we can cut the fish up nicely with the wet rag. Why does the rag have to be wet? 
It protects the fish. Uh, a lot of the fish have got a protective mucus coating over them. Um, right. Most people would notice, especially with King George whiting. It's a very, very thick mucus. Our hands are dry. We might have um, sunscreens, um, mosquito repellents, which really are things that we don't want the fish to absorb through, through its flesh and through its skin. In this case, we can just keep the fish nice and moist. We've got the hook here. Now that hook comes out pretty easily. We're actually using a barbless hook, okay. which I think is a great way to go. If in fact you want to use the, the, the proper hooks with the barb on there, what I suggest is sometimes if you're trying to get the hook out, you'll find that the barb gets caught. Whatever you do, don't yank the fish. Right. Um, some small fish like Tommy Ruff, um, you'll actually pull the whole mouth out. They're very, very soft mouth fish. Okay. If you've got a problem, cut the line. So what we're going to do, I'll get this, this little fella back in the water now. The other thing is we've got a little bit of a drop here, but what we do is we don't throw the fish back in. Right. We want to get as close to the water as we can. In this case, I'm just above the water and off she's gone. No problems at all. <laughs> We're on the Chapman River today. Kim, tell us a bit about the river and what we'd like you to catch. Well, the sea's actually 200 metres that way. Uh -huh. We're going to go upstream a bit to one of my favourite brim spots. The thing we're most likely to catch is be brim, and maybe the chance of a bigger mullet. And can we, you guarantee me a brim or a kilo? I uh, can't guarantee, but we'll cold. try. We'll try. Well, Kim, have it here, mate. Well, if we go up a bit further, there's an old log in the water that should produce some bit bigger fish. Ah, uh, this is where the one kilo fish comes from, is that yes, right? That's right, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Oh, it's good, it's good just here. Old dog's just here. I'm about to try and catch a brim. And instead of using a traditional running ball or bean sinker, I've discovered that something that makes life a lot easier for brim fishermen. It's called a sea sinker, and it's made in Adelaide by a rather clever fellow called Bob Prime. It works like this. Instead of threading the uh, sinker straight onto the main line, you've got this little plastic sleeve, and Dino, you're going to have to be right on the ball to see me doing this, but it slips onto the main line, moves up and down, and then the sinker just slides down over that sleeve, and presto, you've got a running sinker without having to cut the main line and retie it. It's one of the cleverest things I've seen in tackle for a long time, and it's nice to think that South Australians can come up with ideas like this. Fantastic sea sinkers. Salmon trout, it wasn't even a brim. It's not a big brim. In fact, he's quite a small brim. I don't mind using pieces of pilchard for brim, they're quite a good bait. So I'd cut the pilchard off through that section, three or four centimetres back from the tail. When I'm going to bait it up, I'll grab the hook pass it all the way through, pull the line through after it, and then push the pointed barb well into the fish, bring it back through, so it's sticking out like that, and then put a small half hitch around the pilchard's tail. I don't know if you're getting that, Dean, but you can see I've pulled the line right through, holding the tail, it's nice and secure, you can cast that well, and the little guys won't rip it off. It's a good bait. A little bit better. That's getting towards almost half leaving. Well, the sun's trying to break through at last and the wind's down a bit. We've caught a few brim here this afternoon. Nothing too big, but a lot of fun. Chapman River, KI, great place for the family, very accessible. Good for the serious fishermen too. Well, let's see a 30 pound I reckon here, mate. Have a look at this. Oh, what a perler. Chapman River, big brim. In just a minute from FAB South Oz, diving off Kangaroo Island. But first, the latest from Seven Nightly News.